the open meeting law. GL Chapter 30A, Session 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting, the Great Barrington Select Board, will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and our parties with a right and a requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen to the meeting may do so by following the instructions at the top of the agenda. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Pursuant to Mass General Law 7C 30A, Section 20F, after notifying the chair of the public body, any person may make a video or audio recording of an open session of a meeting of a public body or may transmit the meeting through any medium. At the beginning of the meeting, the chair shall inform other attendees of any such recordings. This meeting is being recorded by the town, by CTSB, by the uh, Berkshire Edge, and uh, by members of the public. Any member of the public wishing to speak at the meeting must receive permission of the chair. Listing of agenda items are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted to the extent permitted by law. Select boards, announcement statements, Lee. Uh, yes, I was just um, in response to a, uh a query from a resident, I was hoping to get an update on our plans for the crosswalk on Main Street. Um, I guess there was a, a near miss with the resident crossing and she has requested to see uh, what our plans are um, with the crosswalk. She's aware that there is a, a sign now you know, pointing to a person walking, but um, I guess there, at one point there was something in the middle of Main Street um, that signified that you know there was um, residents crossing or, or people crossing. And uh, I don't know if this is true, but was there a, a time that we had a, um, a sign that said there was a fine um, if you didn't stop for residents? So they were requesting if that could be put up. So I, I guess just the general question on what our plans are now that it's starting to get more busy. Sean's on the line and may be able to address that in just a minute. Thank you. If that works. Can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, so those signs that go in the middle of the road are, are taken out every winter and put back out as soon as the weather breaks and we don't think there's a chance of snow. So they'll be put back out probably in a few weeks. And we also have the engineering work to increase the crosswalk safety being done by beta. I'll have a timeline on their completion in a few weeks. Okay. Do we I think it's going to be for spring that um, will be done? That major construction, that major construction to alter the intersection or the uh, crosswalks won't be done this spring, maybe in the fall, depending on money. Um, the biggest project downtown is going to be the parking lot out at the Conic, uh, out back there, the triplex parking lot area. Okay. So, uh, so basically for the spring, summer, we're just looking to put those um, temporary, I guess, I don't know how you said this, things in the middle of the, the crosswalk. Are we going to restripe it or make it? Yeah. All the crosswalks will be repainted as soon as we have the road swept. And if you'll notice, some of the crosswalks have new flags that have been stuck in um, a little holder. So when you walk across the road, you can wave the flag. Okay. And just um, just to follow up on the question about the signs that did say that there was a fine if you didn't stop, why did why were those taken down? Or are they they're take they're taken down every single winter so we can plow. They stay in the middle of the road, but they have to be removed and then set back out. Okay. So that's that's the signs you're talking about. Okay. So that'll be put up and will be restriped. Um, okay, thank you very much. Okay. Sorry, um, uh, two things. I mean, and I guess Sean's here, but I feel like it might be better if it maybe just needs to be a manager's update. I'm just hoping we could get some update on bridges in the next yeah, I've already, month or so. I already requested that that will be on the agenda. It, 
Yes. You're so on top of it. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, thank right. you. So, can I, oh, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, so we're so time bond and myself are going to meet with Matt Cot in a few weeks. We thought it'd be prudent to come back to the board after we had another discussion with Mastot. Uh, so we had more of a complete sort of uh, picture in terms of what we could present. Yeah, absolutely. Bill. No, nothing here. Ed. Yeah, I, I um, got to participate in the first uh, police outreach Zoom meeting today. Um, and I highly recommend it. Uh, the first, they're repeating this one, which was just to meet the new police chief on Wednesday. Um, but the whole schedule is on the town website under town news on the homepage. Um, so I strongly recommend that to anybody. Thank you, Ed. I have nothing, so town manager's report. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Houstonic Waterworks, just a very, very brief update. Again, nothing uh, major to report, but we're still on schedule for a presentation of our engineers' findings this spring, and we'll do everything we can do to uh, get the word out and inform village residents so that they can participate once we have a firm date. Um, moving into uh, general Housatonic updates, um, we have several for this evening. I'm gonna ask Sean Van Dusen, our public works director to take the next portion of this list and then I'll come back on for a, a brief update on town buildings. So feel, feel free to interrupt at any time. There's, there's uh, quite a few things, but we can start with the Housatonic school building. Um, as you guys know, there's been some vandalism uh, on the lower windows. So I've gotten a contractor to come in um, and take some measurements to the windows and give a price for what it would cost to board up the lower section of windows as well as all of the windows. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from them to see where the price comes in and to see if we have money in this fiscal year's operating budget to cover it or not. Um, secondarily, the staff's been instructed to do a, a daily walk around the school to make sure that if there's any broken glass um, or any any sign that anyone's broken in, that we can address those issues as they arise, especially considering the number of children that are playing there and um, sliding and using the facility. Um, and there's been, as I said, quite a bit of vandalism of the windows. Um, so we are trying to address the security concerns. Um, also, I think it's come up discussions about uh, throwing a tarp on the roof. And you guys may recall a couple of years back, we received um, some quotes to tarp the roof, um, which included, I think, prevailing wage. And the quotes came in somewhere in the $14,000 neighborhood. Um, that was two years ago. Uh, and that didn't address the uh, issues surrounding the chimney, which is also uh, deteriorating. And I want to bring up that uh, the repair of the uh, tarping the roof in the manner we would be doing would, would be a very short-term solution. So. Um, if you do do that, we are not allowed to use the bonding money that was allocated at town meeting, uh, I think three years ago. That would have to be a separate capital uh, allotment, and that money does not exist in my operating budget currently. Um, so that is the sort of rundown of the school building. Um, if you guys have questions about that, you can ask me now. Or I can Lee, Lee has a question. Yeah, I was just kind of curious. Um, have we ever had cameras at the school? And is there... Uh, that might be one solution that might not be as expensive as, I mean, I guess we can do both, but just wondering about security cameras. And sure. Why don't we, we, we can talk about that after, we can talk about that after the meeting if you like. Okay. Yep. Sean, go ahead. So I'll move, I'll move on to the community center, um, the Uzi Dome. So you guys might be aware of last fall, we received a $170,000 uh, green energy grant. And we've gotten the uh, contract from uh, DOER as well as the executed contract from uh, Guardian Energy. And they'll be beginning doing an insulation project to the roof next month in the Hoosie Dome, um, as well as replacement of LED lights. And, and that portion of work represents about $100,000 in improvements to the, to the Hoosie Dome. Um, we're also going to be doing some painting inside of the office and, and maybe taking some furniture we have at Town Hall and moving it. Uh, in into the office area there um, in the Hoosie Dome, a little meeting room, uh, should we have time to do that before the weather breaks and my staff gets too busy. Um, so that's the Hoosie Dome. Moving along to Main Street, I think that some people had had some questions regarding the water main break that occurred there a few months back. 
And anyone that's driven over the road is can feel with their vehicle that's in pretty rough shape. Um, I sp- spoke to Jim Mercer and as well as the contractor that has been working for him. Um, and he's aware that that once the uh, asphalt plants open up this spring, they'll be coming in with a paving crew to, to cut out the undermine areas of the road and repave it in a more permanent way than what they're doing now, which is just using cold patch to try to fill in the potholes, which are pretty substantial. But unfortunately, that's the best that can be done right now, given the circumstances of the weather and the closure of the asphalt plants. Um, also on Main Street, um, Gonzalves construction at a Ludlow was the low bidder for the um, sidewalk extension project that kind of goes from John's garage uh, to um, North Plain Road. Um, that was uh, $230,000, 230, um, which we had gotten a complete streets grant for. That was a uh, committee that I think Ed, Ed might have served on, and we were able to out, get some funds, some grant funds for that. They're going to be starting work there in the next three or four weeks, weather dependent. Um, so there'll be some some um, issues with traffic for there for a little while, but it's a, it's a good project, and it's going to make that area of Hustonic much safer in terms of walkability, uh, connecting the downtown area to the rail trail as well as um, North Plain Road, so people can can cross to go to Old Maids. Um, so that is uh, the Main Street project. Um, moving on to Ramsdale Library, we finished the. Um, bidding documents to replace the boiler that's going out to bid this week um, it's hoped that we can get the new boiler installed this spring depending on the lead time for the replacement boiler which we don't know what it will be yet additionally the um, architect that was chosen by the designer selection committee about a year ago llb architects out of rhode island um, has given us a proposal to start the um, ada accessibility to ramsdale so that work will probably wrap up this summer and we'll have some sort of preliminary design to come before the board with um, this summer um, in terms of um, getting access to elderly people and people that are handicapped into that building in a different way. Um, also, we have, we're out to bid for repairs at the Houstonic Fire Station to the roof as well as some structural issues and rot uh, in a few places. So the bid opening for that, I believe is in two weeks and we hope to have the roof repaired in late spring. I think that's a wrap up of some of the projects. Any questions? A a comment or two, one a quick one on the library, which is in addition to um, older people and people in wheelchairs, it's also people in strollers. We'll be able to get it here. uh, one of which I think you have, Sean. The, yeah, I was crying in the last meeting that you were you were on there. I think yes. you heard her. <laughs> um, the other one I want to say delicately about the Houstonic School, but there was a post on social media uh, suggesting tearing down the school, and I was surprised how many people jumped on thinking that was a good idea. Um, so I want to say it out loud. I know um, uh, Dan is on Dan Bailey's on the on this meeting. Um, and uh, so I just, I know that last time when Dan reported to us, he said, everything's on the table, including that. Um, and I know you're in the process of figuring out what else can go there. I just, um, I guess I'm encouraging you to look at numbers. It's not entirely a financial decision what to do with that building, but to look at numbers. And I think maybe it is time to consider that. I'm not calling for that. I'm just, I was surprised that enough people in who live in Housatonic didn't think tearing it down was a terrible idea. So I'm um, just saying that out loud. So now we've all heard it. Thanks. And you have your hand up. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, thank, thanks, Steve. Um, yes, Ed, thank you for the comments. Um, as I did mention just um, last time, yes, when we do the design charrette, they, they will be looking at um, any, any and all possibilities, essentially, which would include um, the removal of that building. Um, and, and and potential something potentially in its place, what that would be would be a, you know another discussion, I guess. Um, and yeah, costs costs obviously wouldn't be the final final answer to um, you know certainly it makes a difference, but um, yeah, I think every aspect is going to be looked at as as best as we can. Um, and, and yeah, I've heard that too. Just just lately 
I start hearing more and more tear it down. And I don't know if it's just because, you know, last meeting you guys had, you know, it, it seemed like the building was in dire needs, which maybe it is, but, <laughs> but, um, so some of that could also be, um, <laughs> no, reactionary too. Well, anyway, um, Sean, if, if, if I just may ask a clarifying question regarding the roof of the who's the tonic sure. school. Um, last, last time, um, it was reported that the roof may not be in, um, safe condition is, ha have you had anybody look at the roof as far as like an engineer and architect to determine whether or not the, the roof is actually stable? So I, I think that, that the, in, I'm, I wasn't part of the last meeting, but I think that what was being discussed was just that it's not so simple as you just go up and throw a tarp on. And right. as you know, you have to get a lull and maybe some staging. The right. people that would do the work would have to be tied off and anchored into something that's um, that they know is is firm enough to stand on. So I think that that was partly the might have been the rationale for saying, you know, it's a little dangerous. You can't walk up there through that valley um, because there's a hole in the roof. Um, so I, there's been no analysis done, no architectural analysis done to, to really go through what needs to be done. We based our numbers for the roof repairs um, that went to town meeting a few years ago, based upon what was done here at town hall, um, any sort of work that would have to happen in that nature is, is pretty substantial, obviously, in terms of the architectural cost. We would need to, to have that done as part of the large capital project, but it has not been completed yet because I think we were waiting to figure out what we were going to do with the building before we, we went into the an in-depth analysis of the architecture. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just wanted to, I just wanted to clarify that. So when we, so when um, the architects that are going to do our shrap for us get together, they have all the information. And if there had been some engineers report stating something, at least we could get that information to them. Um, but I think, we're, I think with what you said, they should be, um, they should have everything they need at, to continue with the charrette. Um, second, second question regarding um, Main Street repaving. Um, I, I assume that that cost of that would be um, picked up by Housatonic Waterworks. The Correct. Okay. Is the cost is entirely on Housatonic Water. Okay. Um, which ultimately comes back to us that pay the <laughs> water rates. Um, the um the question regarding that is though who who oversees that sean and and i'm not saying that that the contractor wouldn't do a good job or is, isn't experienced in it but you and i both know that when roads get patched you know two years later with the weather that we have in new england there's frost heaves and there's it's cracking and buckling again so who who is who oversees that to ensure that the that anything they dig up is compacted properly and repaved to whatever specifications are required you you can be sure i'll be up there when they do the work um in compliance with our permitting surrounding um compassion and other things which um, i think i implemented the first year i started here and you might recall that there were some issues around town with compaction mm -hmm. um if i if i don't do that road right i can assure you that my relatives up there won't be happy with me um yeah, so mine might uh, not be either. Yeah, I know. I need, I, I need, I'm sure you would. You would. You'd reach out to let me know that. So I'll, I'll be there, and I'll know. I know the contractors will be doing the work, so there'll yep. be communication going on the whole time. Okay. And um, just one last question, and and I appreciate you guys giving me time. Is um the the sidewalk itself, it the sidewalk extension, and just cl to clarify, that is going from essentially John's garage all the way down to um, Route 41. Correct. Correct. Now, which side of the road is it going on? The right side. <laughs> south or north? <laughs> <laughs> the north side. North north side. Okay. Is there um is there has uh surveys been done to ensure that is all town or is there Yeah, is there we've got sur we've got surveys and easements all done. We're completely okay. ready. Yep. Okay. Cuz I I know on the south side obviously it drops off extensively. Um and I know that you would end up having to put railings and things like that on the south side, and maybe even on the north side. And I was just wondering, uh, closer to like country carpets, yeah, was just past yep. the rail trail. I was just wondering if that's also been considered in the design. Sorry, I didn't catch the last part. So, 
the the part just the section just past the opening to the rail trail just just before country carpets there's a yep. steep drop off there oh yeah so, yeah, so we, code would yep. require some sort of railing yeah it'll it'll probably require some a transition of earth on that side to make it taper off i i think that we've talked to the owner about that already um okay. i've looked through my notes but that that's all been addressed i believe okay and i think yeah i think that we're gonna replace the railing that exists there but i have to look through my emails okay and and then just one last question about sidewalks um so who's a tonic has a bunch of sort of existing sidewalks um two two that really catch my attention because i when i walk all the time i notice them is the one um front street essentially from the corner of pleasant street up to well where the sidewalk ends which which is essentially just past um deb kaufman's art gallery um there's a there's a section missing and then the section in front of um the former former um all saints church is also there but in really really bad shape and i know that that's a very uh heavily walked section of road and it can ask you know be dangerous especially um as you're walking towards um towards the cemetery and i didn't know if there's any plans to address address that or extend the sidewalk all the way to oak street or whatever your plan would be for that. And, and before you answer that, just I'll also throw in the section of sidewalk from sectionally the Pleasant Street directly across from the front of the school up Highland Street um, to the top of Highland. There is there is a sidewalk there, but again, it is is in bad shape. Right. right. Yeah. So unfortunately, there's there's quite a few sidewalks in town that are between 40 and 60 years old. So there's not much left to them. Uh, we just finished the the pavement management survey um, plan by EDM, and in the second phase of of the of their work, they're going to go, be going through all the sidewalks in town to try to see which ones are in bad shape and which ones aren't, so that we can identify and fix those. Um, certainly, the areas with heavier foot traffic are, are places we want to prioritize. Beyond that we've switched to, to doing a, the paving a little bit differently than it has been a, done historically, which is that anytime I pave a road, we redo the sidewalks as part of it. So uh, historically, a lot of the roads that got paved, the sidewalks were skipped. Um, that's not, that's not really the, the, the way you want to do it. And so we have changed that. If we pave, we do the sidewalks and we are trying to address the sidewalks that are in bad shape that need to be redone. I can tell you that the area by the hospital is in, in really bad shape and needs to be redone as so is the entirety of the sidewalks in South Main Street. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's not a unique problem. There's a tonic. It's definitely something that's town-wide and um, we're doing our best, best to, uh, to address it. Um, and we will look at those areas you've uh, mentioned, certainly. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dan. Anyone else? Okay, moving ahead, Mark. Uh, town buildings reopening plan. Thanks, Steve. Uh, one final update uh, before we move on, and that's just to uh, inform the public that most of our town buildings will be reopening uh, to the public on March 15th, so this coming Monday. Uh, there are a few exceptions uh, where we'll have limited services, our senior center, Ramsdale Library, and even Mason, uh, but we will be phasing in and reopening all buildings, uh, hopefully by late spring, early summer. But just wanted to let everyone know that we are, uh, that I'm working with staff to get buildings reopened by the 15th and um, and we will have hours and information up to date on our website and, and then within the week. So that's all I have, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, public hearing, transfer of existing retail package goods store, all, alco all alcoholic liquor license held by Aberdales Inc to Sandy Liquor Inc. DBA Aberdales, Kirsch Kumar Hotel Manager, located to 10 Depot Street. Do you have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Uh, second. Um, I have a motion by Ed, a second by Bill. Roll call vote. Lee? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I, so it's unanimous. 
So, Mr. Porter and Mr. Aberdell and Mr. Patel, go right ahead. Hey, uh, good evening, board. Uh, my name is Matthew Porter. I'm the attorney for Sanby Liquor Inc. Uh, along with me tonight is Suresh Kumar Patel. Mr. Patel is the president of Sanby Liquor Inc. Uh, he'd also be the proposed manager of the license. Uh, Mr. Aberdale uh, has been so kind to join us as well. He's the seller. I believe Mike McDonald, who represents him, is on the, the call as well. He may be out there just watching. Uh, but before the board, this is the transfer of the license uh, that's associated with the sale of Aberdale's liquors. Uh, Sanvi Liquor, Inc. Uh, is made up of four individuals within the same Patel family. Um, as I said, Suresh Kumar Patel, who's with us, is going to be the proposed manager of the license. Uh, very experienced uh, operational group here. Uh, they own other liquor stores. Uh, within the state of Massachusetts, they certainly understand the res rules and responsibilities that come along with it, uh, as, long, as well as uh, the, the great responsibility uh, in making sure that everybody's carried properly and that all protocols are being adhered to. Uh, they recently bought uh, the Spirit Shop in Williamstown, uh, and that operation has been going uh, swimmingly so far. Uh, no major anticipated changes to the store whatsoever. Uh, Mr. Aberdale has been so kind as to help uh, with the transition. So he'll be there for a period of time after the uh, the sale occurs uh, just to help, um, like I said, with the smoother transition within the town. Um, there is a pledge of license going back to Mr. Aberdale. The seller is financing the transaction. Um, so in order to secure that promissory note on that, uh, that we are asking the town to approve a pledge of that license. Um, but very experienced operating group, as I said, everybody is TIP certified. Uh, all employees were required to be TIP certified as well. Uh, they have not had any issues with any underage sales or any violations whatsoever in any of their other stores. Mr. Haberdale, did you want to say anything? Yes, I would. Thank you, Steve. Um, you know, the Aberdale family doesn't take this decision lightly. Um, we are, um, we've been in the community for a lot of years, starting with my parents. Um, 2021 marks the 60th year of um, our business. Um, um, owning your own family business, as um, I'm sure Steve can attest to, it's um, not always the easiest thing to do. Um, and um, um, when we we reached out to the second or the third generation of our family, um, the um, no one wanted to undertake this endeavor. <laughs> um, so um, as you all know, um, that know me, um, I'm no spring chicken. I'm getting a little bit older here and I've had a few health issues in the past. Um, so it was, um, you know, eventually the business was going to have to um, be sold or closed or something along those lines. Um, so um, I've had a lot of in, um, interested people over the years and um, the Patel family that approached me um, quite some time ago, I visit all their stores and have lengthy conversations about what we do for the the community who's a tonic, um, not just being a store, being there, but also being a good neighbor. And um, and I witnessed that in a lot of their current establishments. So I think, um, you know, although the name may change and the faces may change a little bit, but um, the um, the presence in who's a tonic and being part of the community will continue. Um, you know, I'm sad to say it's not going to be with the Aberdale family, but um, as, as Mr. Porter uh, mentioned, um, I will be with the program for quite some time um, in the future um, to make sure where things are going um, the way we all want. Um, so again, I, I'd like to thank the town. You've been um, um, very cordial over the years and helpful over the years, um, most recently the other night. Um, so um, I suspect that um, maybe I can continue um, once I relieve myself of the duties or slow down a little bit, I, I may be able to uh, participate in the community a little bit more in other areas. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Anyone have any questions or public comment? A motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second roll call vote. Kate. Aye. Lee. Aye. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. And I. No. A motion. Motion to approve the transfer of the liquor license. Second. So I have a motion and a second. Discussion. Hearing none, roll call vote. Lee. Aye. Kate. Aye. Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. 
and I, and I, and I would just say I've known the Aberdale family a long time, and I know they'll still have a presence in Lusitonic and tell you right. It's hard to run a family-owned store. It's even harder to sell it. So um, I wish you good luck and your family good luck. Thank you. And uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, just if I may, um, can I also have the board just approve the uh, the pledge of that license as well? Uh, we'll just need that for state purposes. I believe the the transfer was approved, but we just need an approval of the approval of the pledge as well. A motion to approve. A second. So I have a motion to approve the pledge of the license by Ed, a second by Bill. Any discussion? Roll call, Lee. Aye. Kate. Aye. Uh, Bill. Aye. Ed. Aye. And I. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving ahead. Strategic Sustainability and Livability Com Committee, Composting and Food Waste Diversion. I'm going to recuse myself again. Right. Uh, so included in tonight's packet was an executive summary from our, our Strategic Sustainability and Livability Committee on a composting initiative. And here tonight to present uh, to you is Aretha Whitehead and Mark Phillips, both members of our uh, Strategic Sustainability Committee. Hi, everybody. Thanks for taking the time. Hi, thanks for having us. So uh, everybody should have the executive summary uh, as a part of the packet that Mark generously prepared with uh, Sean Van Dusen's support and Aretha and I um, over the past week. This executive summary came out of our letter of recommendation that the committee prepared uh, through research that was performed over the past year. Um, the kind of top level comments are that uh, we have a significant amount of food waste going into our waste stream. And uh, we'd like to basically support the town uh, to take the next steps to make some changes. Um, and so you'll see in the recommendations that Mark prepared <clears throat> um, that includes some education as well as some more hands-on administrative support, um, specifically for Sean Van Dusen. Um, to work on onboarding into uh, the small, the sustainable materials recovery program, as well as the recycling dividends program. So happy to uh, field any questions you guys have. Do we have any questions? Seeing no questions, do I have a motion? I've lost Ed, so if someone can make a motion. Bill, just unmute yourself. Still muted, Bill. How's that? Yes. Uh, I move that we uh, support this recommendation. Do I have a second? I have a second by Kate, a uh, motion by Bill. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Lee? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bill? Aye. Ed? You're recused. I'm recused. That's right. You're recused. I'm sorry about that. And um, I vote aye, so it's unanimous. I look forward to this partnership. I think this is going to be terrific. So thank you very much. Thank you. We're really excited, too. Yeah, this is going to be terrific. Great. Thank you guys so much. <clears throat> 30 seconds that I already forgot. <laughs> moving, moving ahead. New business. Berkshire Busk, Downtown Summer 2021 Music Program Presentation. Okay, so Berkshire Busk is the brainchild of a small working group uh, led by resident Gene Carr. And it looks like you've already promoted them. Thank you, Steve. Yep. Um, that met virtually this fall and winter to discuss a formal music program for the upcoming 2021 uh, spring, summer, fall season uh, in downtown Great Barrington. And, uh, the goal was to build on the success of last year's live music on Railroad Street. So uh, it's still in the planning stages, but we'd like to get some uh, feedback from the select board tonight and take an opportunity to promote this idea and build some excitement for spring. So, um, so Gene's here tonight to walk you through a, a brief presentation. And if you'll bear with me, I will get the presentation up. 
on the screen. Can everyone see that? Oh, yes. look at that. You, you can okay. all hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mark, shall I proceed? Yeah, go ahead, Gene, and I'll uh, just give me a heads up when you're ready for the uh, screen. Sure. As, uh, as Mark said, this is um, uh, my goal is to do two things, to give you an overview of the goals of the project and then some specifics for you to look at. Uh, go ahead, Mark, and, and uh, go to the next slide. Um, yeah, so let's start with a lofty goal which is there are a lot of must do things in the Berkshires in the summer. And there's, uh, in my view, always room for doing something new and uh, sort of taking our place uh, in creating a real must experience or must do event. So that's kind of where I, where I began is let's do something that has real impact. It really grabs the attention of the public. Uh, go ahead, Mark. Um, and at the heart of what I'm about to demonstrate or show you is ultimately economic development. You know, the, the, the stores and the restaurants in town, not, not only in Great Barrington, but truthfully around the whole country have been suffering. And so this is an effort to accomplish a lot of things all at once, but not the least of which is to support the stores and the restaurants in the downtown area. Go ahead, Mark. So the goals I'm going to just uh, briefly say uh, in the first line, obviously, the notion of greater community engagement, we're going to create some employment, this project will uh, create some jobs, and it will give businesses in the area a way to support the town in a new way. Looking on the second line, um, ultimately, I referenced the idea of driving commerce and also the idea of demonstrating a way to showcase local talent. So how do we actually do all this? Please proceed, Mark. So the idea is uh, what's known as a busker festival, the idea of inviting performers of all stripes to perform in various locations along Main Street, which I will describe to you, um, not uh, for the really for the joy of performing. This is not um, a project that, at least at this point, is going to pay the performers. They're going to get paid the way buskers are paid all over the world, by people walking by and either donating on their smartphones or with their dollars in a tip jar. Go ahead, Mark. Um, Mark referenced that it's a music project. It is, although I would like to suggest that it could be a lot broader than that. I would love to have clowns and jugglers and dancers and other types of music. The idea is to really uh, create a, a, a really a smorgasbord of cultural activity so that you could walk from one side of town to the other and have really a unique cultural experience different than anything that anybody has ever sort of experienced before in downtown. Some solo performers, some small groups or two or three or four performers. Uh, please proceed, Mark. Uh, the schedule, roughly, it's simple. We're talking about early evenings on Fridays and Saturdays between the July 4th and Labor Day. The times are, this is, I didn't put it down exactly. It's approximately those hours. We'll see exactly as we get closer how many groups apply to perform and how that all works. But this is the general idea. There, there was Programming that happened last summer, which I'm going <clears> to, <throat> which I'm going to comment on in the next slide. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, you can you can forward the slide. Uh, oh, I did. Uh, oh, that's interesting. It hasn't moved on my screen. That's too bad. Um, I don't know what you all are looking at right now, but let me uh, let me see if I can go to my own screen so I can follow along. Um, is this the one? Um, yes, thank you. That's, that's great. Okay. So what, what I'd like to share with you now are some proposed locations. Where, where is this actually going to take place? Oh, I see that the, um, uh, uh, that the idea here is to create a journey, as I referenced before, walking from one end of town to the other. I've identified a bunch of spaces. Some are appropriate for solo performers. Others are, are appropriate for groups. 
Obviously, we don't know what the summer is going to be like from a COVID point of view. So we're going to try to be mindful to provide spaces where people don't gather, you know, and, and bunch up together. And I'll endeavor to find locations where the stores or the buildings are not in use in the evenings on Friday and Saturday nights. So there wouldn't be any conflict with, uh, with commerce or activities that would otherwise take place in those buildings. Um, go ahead and proceed. So you may remember that last summer, there was various musical activities that took place, obviously on Upper Railroad Street and at, at, Soho, at SoCo, that, that's where music took place and that will continue. And um, I think you know that Lee Rogers um, and also Jeff Caminetti are involved in sort of booking, so to speak, the artists for that, those locations. Um, the Berkshire Food Co-op also um, brought some music during the daytime and they're gonna continue to do that and bring musicians at night. And then the gazebo, which is also programmed by Lee Rogers, will also continue. So this is sort of the starting point of what, where, what we had uh, last year. Now, if you go to the next slide, um, here I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of different locations in the next couple of slides to kind of describe the locations I've identified um, I found 12 locations. We may not use all of them. We may not use them. We may not use each of them each night. It depends on really the kinds of performers who apply and who are, are, are going to perform. We'll sort of figure out where they will go and what would be most appropriate. So this is sort of the, sort of the largest number of locations um, subject to what eventually gets filled. So let me, let me, let's do a walk down. Uh, downtown and we'll take a look and I'll show you kind of how I have this in mind. Uh, so let's let's start with the next slide. Um, the sort of furthest, the furthest northernmost place I think will be somewhere around the Flying Church. It could be in there. It could be at this particular spot or it could be in the parking lot, but there's a lot of open space at the at this at the Flying Church, which I think would be good for small groups. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, the bank, Salisbury Bank, um, I know them well. I had a conversation with them today. Their parking lot, which won't be in use, um, assuming they're, they are agreeable, also very good for a quartet or a trio of performers. Um, so that's the next spot. Uh, go ahead, Mark. Uh, obviously, the post office is not going to be open at those hours, and it's a wonderful open, big open space uh, where performers could, uh, could be located. Go ahead. Uh, the library provides a really interesting, it's a, it's a natural stage, if you will. Um, so performers could sit, uh, could be situated at the top, and then you've got the ability for people to stand around, and, and it's almost like it was designed as a stage. Go ahead. Uh, the church, the same thing, St. Peter's Church, same thing. There's a lot of open space there. There's grass to one side, where obviously I would love to do some things for kids, where we would have either a a clown or a juggler or a magician. So this is a, a, a wonderful spot for people to uh, safely gather, but there's a lot of space there. Go ahead. Um, the Berkshire Hathaway location um, does have some space. I would imagine we'd only want to put a single person, either a violinist playing or a guitar player playing. This is, this is not meant uh, to take up any street space. Uh, go to the next. Um, same with the, this storefront, the, I would love for something to be around this location. It doesn't have to be exactly here. It could be in front of fuel, uh, you know, something at the, at, in the, in the sort of central location there on main street would be great. This one has an inset. So if this spot works, it doesn't disrupt the, the street. Go ahead. Um, same thing with the set, the store now that's here. It has an inset so that you could have a performer there so that people could walk by and it wouldn't obstruct the street. I will say as, a, as an aside that Robin uh, from Robin's Candy, um, I had a call with her and she actually requested that there be a musician outside of her store. Um, I haven't included that location because of a slight concern that that could disrupt the flow of traffic. So I haven't, I haven't had this conversation with her, but I'm not... I'm not including that in this uh, in this initial set of locations. Uh, next one. 
Uh, obviously, the alleyway uh, around where Rubiners and Ruby's is is a, is a nice location because uh, it's set off the street. Go ahead, Mark. Um, this one, this store um, has again a kind of natural stage um, that that a performer or two could be at, and again, it won't disrupt the street uh, from people walking by. Next one, um, town hall. Obviously. Um, a little bit of snow this day, so um, but you can get the idea that you could easily put a performer here. Next slide. Um, the folks at St. James Place um, have been very uh, uh, supportive, and they've offered up um, not only to use this location here, and if you go to the next slide, also in the back of the their backyard. This could again be a, an area for children's programming. Um, but they're also going to provide their great room or their meeting room in the back. They've offered that up as sort of a headquarters and storage area for equipment that we might need to store, signs and posters and that kind of thing. I'll also say you, you may be wondering who the dancer is. That's Mossy Park Harrison, who has a, a dance company in, uh, in, uh, in Housatonic, who volunteered her artistic services for these photographs. Go ahead. Um, just in the last two slides here, just to give you an idea of the project timeline, um, I've spent, obviously I've been working on this since last summer, but in earnest since the beginning of the year. Um, in a moment, I'll talk to you about sponsorship. We're building digital tools such as a website application forms, working on budgeting uh, the nonprofit. Uh, the nonprofit center for the Berkshires has agreed to be a fiscal sponsor for this project. Um, so that is basically the January, February work. March and April, we're working on production planning. I'm going to hire some people starting soon. Uh, the outreach to performers will take place in early May and June, and obviously event production is in July and August. So that's the overall schedule. Uh, next slide. Um, as Oh, I guess I missed the slide somewhere in here. I, uh, think, but, I think that was the hiccup earlier. Oh, I I'll, see. I'll Sorry. Go. It just Sorry. Uh, go, go there. Yeah. That's the slot I didn't see. Yes. So the the point I was going to make here is that obviously this is an entrepreneurial project. I didn't want to let the fact that the town didn't have very much budget for entertainment to stop stop us. So I've been reaching out to companies and organizations in the area. I'm pleased to say that I have nine sponsors that have confirmed for dollar amounts that represent about 60% of the funding goal. I've got at least another dozen conversations going on. So my hope is that by the end of this month, I will have secured in sponsorship funding the, the costs to run this program. And really the costs are hiring some people to be managers and to uh, organize it and also some production uh, operational costs and advertising and promotion. Um, also, as I mentioned to you before, the, the co-op and uh, St. James Place have offered in-kind services and promotion and space. Um, my last slide here, you won't need to read this, but you should be aware that I come from a background of live event production. I actually um, ran a, a symphony orchestra in New York City for... Um, for about uh, seven or eight years, I ran the American Symphony Orchestra, which really meant that we produced the live events at Carnegie Hall, Lincoln Center, um, the concerts at, out of doors, as well as tours. So I have a background uh, in live events. I also have another part of my career involved in technology. And I started a company that provided ticketing and fundraising software for cultural organizations. So this project brings together sort of the two things that I've spent a large part of my career working on, which is the combination of arts and business and technology. So thank you for the opportunity. I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions, please. Um, one, I guess, you know, I, I understand that fundraising is about the second hardest thing in the world to do, but that's after making a living as a musician. Is there <laughs> no way to raise the money to pay them? You know, I, I as a, I, I didn't say, I didn't say anywhere in here uh, that I'm also a musician. Um, I played in one of the bands at the Triplex last summer. Um, so there's no one that's more um, dedicated to trying to pay musicians than me. What, what I didn't want to do 
was to set an objective to offer musicians payment and then fail to raise the money and the whole thing would collapse under its own weight. So um, my, my goal, um, Ed, is to keep the fun. I want to raise, I don't, I'm not going to stop raising money, right? If I get to the minimum threshold that funds the people and the promotion and I can continue on such that we can offer the musicians some payment, then that is absolutely positively part of the plan. I just didn't want to, I figure that next year, if this works the way I'm hoping next year, raising money will be easier. Um, like you said, you know, raising money during a pandemic, not being able to meet people in face to face makes this pushing a, a rock up a hill. So I want to I want to use the momentum of getting this going. And I also know from talking to other musicians that there is a joy in performing. And I know from our experience, uh, truthfully, at the Triplex, it was not unusual for us to get well over 100 or 200 dollars in a night. Uh, just from people putting ten dollars in the in the tip bucket. So that's my perhaps too extended answer. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I have one hand up. Hold on. Hi, Kate. Uh, Hi. Patrick. Sorry, oh. it's just my hands are a bit tied. Yes. Um, I just, I guess, um, I noticed a couple of the businesses that you said that you're looking at for locations are um, businesses that potentially stay open later in the yeah. evening. And I'm assuming you'll um, be checking in with them before you confirm those as locations. Correct. Great. Patrick Hollenbeck. Oh, potential locations. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. They're perfect spots. I just wanted to yeah. double check that. Awesome. Yeah. Go ahead, Patrick. Just have to unmute yourself. Well, Patrick's unmuting himself. Anyone else? Patrick, you are all set to go. Just have to personally unmute oh, oh, yourself. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, Gene, that, that's great planning. This is Pat Hollenbeck, who's a tonic. Oh, hey, Pat, um, how are you? You know, as every, <laughs> good. As everybody knows, you know, this has been a devastating year for musicians. This week is the 365th night of silent nights, no live music. This is the worst period of, of music maybe ever, if not ever, then at least in modern history. So for the cultural district to even, uh, even just mention the possibility of not paying musicians, this year of all years is just not going to go well uh, with the general public. So I don't think there's going to be problem raising money as long as you get the word out. Because, um, again, this this has been annihilating. The, some of the best musicians in the world are not working. The, the musicians just, you mentioned, American Symphony Orchestra, all those things, you know, that nobody's working. So and it's not going to end now. In, in our business, there won't be any meaningful work for a lot of these things until the spring of next year. That's the way it goes. So please, uh, I just encourage you, even the town, uh, you got to support musicians. We need it now. We never have before. We need it now. And especially in the cultural district, you cannot let people put a tin cup out at this point. Can't do it. <laughs> well, I think you can. Thank you. I, thank you, Pat. I would just uh, also add that if anyone that's <laughs> listening uh, has the opportunity to open a door, to a potential sponsor that would be interested in having a conversation with me, I would welcome uh, any help um, that anyone could offer. I'm, as I said before, I'm entirely in agreement with Pat that musicians have had a rough time and I would love to help in that regard. Just give your email address because it was, I don't oh, think. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it's, it's Gene, G-E-N-E, at Berkshire Busk. Berkshire, B -U -S -K com. Gene at BerkshireBusk.com. Perfect. Anyone else? I think this is going to be really exciting. I'm looking forward to this summer. So thank you for all you do for you're doing for this. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Citizen speak time. Suzanne Fall. Hi there. Hi there. I think you can hear me. I think me. you can hear me. Uh, we got, uh, we got close. Close. 
Yeah, there's yeah, there's there's an echo. There's an me. echo for me. Do you have two, you have open, two open, open uh, computers or computers or phone? Uh, how's that? Uh, how's that? Not any better. Not any better. How's that? How's that? <laughs> let's, let's try it. I don't think I'm better though. Uh, okay, testing again. Much better. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't have the echo. Um, I just clicked around different settings. Perfect. Go uh, ahead. I must have missed the Housatonic part. Yeah, that was at the beginning. Okay, I apologize. Um, that's why I'm here. And are, are the recordings of these meetings available? Or Yes, uh, they will be. Absolutely. Um, do you guys have time to just answer some questions at, at the risk of... You, you can tell me if it's just in the recording and I can go to the recording. Okay, go, you know, go All ahead. I guess I'm wondering, I'm... I'm mostly concerned about the school building right now. Or is there a movement to issue another RFP, or where does that stand? Uh, we're not at that point yet, so that wasn't discussed. So hopefully, in the next month or two months, we'll we'll be discussing it. It was it wasn't discussed tonight. No, not tonight. Okay, um, and that's because. Well. The, you're waiting Housatonic to hear from the, the Housatonic Improvement Committee is going to do some things and come back to us with a recommendation, and then we'll discuss it. Okay. Well, as long as I'm here, I just want to um, voice some concern. Um, and and maybe I'm preaching to the choir. I'm not sure what page pages all of you are on with the school building, but... Um, I just want to say for the record that, uh, you know, I've been here for the almost two decades that the school's been closed and standing and, and RFPs have been put out um, several times. And, and also lots of consultations with different developers. I remember the Mr. Must chapter and, um, and working with uh, Bill Napo and, and, you know, all the different possibilities. And where I'm at at this point as a resident, having witnessed it, witnessed all that for 18 years, is that um, it seems to me that by using that space to improve and expand our town common, our village common, would be the best way to recreate the the vitality and the dynamism that used to be there when the school was occupied so um it's just something i've been thinking a lot about now that so much time has passed you know i kind of uh sat back and watched to see what happened with all the rfps and development proposals or lack thereof and um and I've said I said this in a meeting with you guys a couple of years ago, but what what seems to me to be the most important thing is restoring the vitality that was once there. And it just seems like if if we focus on improving the village common and the park and making it a place for kids and families and parents and neighbors to actually meet each other and have a community, then we then we can restore some of that vitality better than by um, certainly better than by, you know, waiting for some miracle developer. So I just wanted, uh, like I said, I, I really don't know. I'm talking into a vacuum. I'm talking into a, a screen. <laughs> right, we're, we're listening. To you. Um, but, and maybe I'm, maybe you guys are on that page as well, but um, I don't, I don't think I'm talking to any Housatonic residents, so I, so I can, I, I just feel like it's 
it's important to share kind of how it feels to have lived here for the past 18 years and raised kids here for the past 18 years. And, we we uh, appreciate that. We do. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we will go then to, um, well, first of all, I will say there were 36 people at the height of tonight, six attendees and 36 participants and 30 attendees, just so everyone knows. Um, select board time, Lee. Nothing for me. Kate. <clears throat> Bill. No, nothing. Ed. No. And nothing for me. Uh, media time. Seeing nothing from media time, by unanimous consent, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. <clears throat>